Houdini 18.5 has brought a lot of new and interesting features, and one of those I want to take a look at today. It's going to be used for mostly finishing off your models, maybe adding the final details to your high-res models, like you can see in these spheres here. But let's go ahead and jump in and take a look at how we can create these extremely detailed models without going and actually really modeling all that much. And we're just gonna select this input here and we're gonna see a different model as well. Um, you're gonna be able to see that we can also use it to just affect the, the sides of models and not the tops, which is another technique uh, that's gonna be extremely useful for doing things like cliffs where you wanna just displace the rock on the side and the tops you want to kind of leave alone for maybe like dirt or something like that. Let's go ahead, let's just show you how this is all done. Super simple to set up, just drop in a geometry node. I'm just gonna drop in a sphere for now. I'm actually gonna use this to model anything, but we'll see, I can drop in this sphere as a polygon and then we're gonna crank the um, polygon amount up pretty high here. So we'll just crank the frequency up so we got a lot of polygons going on here. And this is needed because this is a labs tool set uh, tool basically. So you'll need to go up here and I think it's in, uh, actually I think it's in this. You have to go to shelves and you have to enable the side effects labs right there and then download the tool set to, to enable these tools. I would definitely recommend using or installing the side effects tool set because while they're used to be branded as like their game dev tool set, it is definitely has a lot of things in it that are extremely useful for other things as well, not just creating stuff for games. So once you have that installed, we're gonna type in triplanar and you'll see the labs triplanar displacement. Basically, if you've ever used any sort of texturing program, you probably know about the triplanar projection technique. Basically, it's going to project an image onto the surface from up, I guess, up and down, uh, left and right and front and back. And then it's gonna blend between the three different planes that it's projecting from. Just makes a really nice looking seamless kind of texture going on when you're doing texturing. And in this case, it's gonna create our, our nice displacement. So I'm gonna go into, before I set the display flag here, I'm gonna select that and I'm gonna just go and select our uh, our image. So I'm just gonna use, you just wanna use a black and white displacement, basically. I'm um, just using the Quixel Megascans free assets for this. So I'm just gonna select a displacement here. And then once I set this display flag, you're gonna see that it's gonna calculate. And now we have this nice displaced geometry going on here with some really nice geometry. It doesn't look too bad. Uh, there are some issues, a little bit of jagged edges going on, but for the most part, it's not really too bad. It creates uh, some nice geometry that you got going on. So you'd probably want to um, make sure that your mesh is fully uh, quad, like it has quads that are evenly spaced. Probably wanna go through and use a uh, VDB. So VDB from polygons and then you would want to convert back to polygons just to get a nice even set of geometry all across your model when you're doing any sort of uh, triplanar displace on actual models but here in the settings you can see that we got a bunch of things going on so this texture scale if i set this to a higher scale so let's just set that to one you're going to see what happens here it becomes a lot more uh, pronounce it because it's basically increasing the tiling. So as you, I don't know why they call it texture scale so much as texture uh, like tiling, I guess. So if I set this lower to 0.2, you gonna see that it is creating a much, uh, I guess much less tiled texture here. So if I up this displacement scale to something like point, let's do 0.5, it's just gonna, you know, increase the displacement. And then this axis blend, so let's just reset these back to normal here, just so I can show you what's going on. So as you can see across here, there's kind of this 
banding maybe a little bit hard to see but there's like this banding that we got going on here and that's because it is blending between the two so if i set this to zero you're going to see real hard edges between all of these blends so basically this is one plane being projected the top you can see it's one plane being projected down so there's no real blending going on between the two if i set this to something like 10 you're going to see that it blends pretty much all of it out so you'll just get this tiny little displacement that you don't really want so you want to find a nice happy medium maybe something like two maybe three if you're not liking what you got going on you want a little bit of a better blend between the two it is going to smooth out the areas between the just the planes i guess so we'll leave it like that for now you can also change the offset here so you see as i change this actually it doesn't look like it's really doing much um it's not doing what i thought it would i haven't really didn't really mess with the axis offset much. I bet you you have to crank these up a pretty decent amount. Nope, okay. I don't really really know how that's gonna affect it. Like I said, I didn't really use that much. Um, I would think that it would, It's like I said, it's gonna offset, but it doesn't look to be doing a whole lot. Not really sure what's going on there. But this displace Y is gonna be extremely useful because I uncheck that is checked by default you can see now we don't have anything going on the tops which is extremely useful if you're creating things like cliffs so if i go back to the other geometry node that i got you can see that we got nothing going on on the top so as you create you know like i said things like cliffs you don't want the rock to be displaced along the top you want it to be just on the edges or on the sides of the model rather and that's how you're going to achieve that sort of a look go ahead and jump back in there you can also mirror and the Z and the X direction uh, pretty self-explanatory what those do doesn't really seem like something that I would want to use all that much but who knows and then this one is a big one I'm just gonna go and uncheck both of these the use projection offset so with this you can actually as you see here as I check that you're going to use a noise to actually change how the projection is taking place. So this is just gonna be a further, basically blending between the two. I'd set this to something, maybe a little bit lower of an amplitude, maybe change you know, the type of noise it is. So I just set it to zero, see where it's really affecting. As you crank this up, I'm gonna say that you're probably not gonna to wanna to use too much of this and maybe not even sparse convolution you're probably going to want to use something like the the perlin noises in here and you're probably honestly going to want to drop the roughness of this and maybe the turbulence as well because if you know anything about the noises and the way that they work uh, they're going to be more noisy and with this sort of a, a blending you just want to displace it a little bit of course i got something popping up but the, you just want to displace just a little bit of this so you can get a little bit of a better blend in between the seams there. And then you also have this displacement scale attribute. So you check that. I don't have a displacement scale attribute actually on our geometry spreadsheet here. If I set this to something like the color, I'm sure it would, uh, it would work fine. But you can probably just set this based on a noise. If I had to guess, so you could probably do some sort of a cool noise. Let's just try that, actually. Let's do a point vop, and let's put this in between here. And I'm just gonna OCD wire those up. Let's see, what was that called? Display scale, so I'm just gonna copy that right now. And then let's go in here, and let's actually set the display flag there. Let's use just a turbulent noise and we're gonna drop our position in there and let's just drop this into color so we can see kind of what's going on. Now let's set this to something, mm, let's go, let's do an original Portlin. Give us an interesting thing here. So let's go with a little bit higher roughness. Um, maybe drop the turbulence here, something like that. 
And then let's bind and export. And let's set this to be the same name and a float value. And let's see, let's see if this actually works. I haven't actually tried this, but let's, let's see if that works. And let's unwire the color. It looks like it is working. Unwire the color so we can see. So yeah, it does seem to be working. So that'd be another way that you can actually blend between the two. So if I go in and actually change some of, the, some of these settings now, maybe we crank up the roughness more. You're gonna see some weird sort of stuff probably going on. Nope, not too bad. Maybe we crank up the, actually let's, let's drop the frequency, something like 0 0.4, 0 0.4, 0.4 and it just gives us a little bit more coverage let's up the amplitude here so just something like two and you can see it's starting to displace more so you can get some cool kind of looks going on here so you could actually do a couple of these you could set this to this bind export to displace scale one and then maybe displace scale two and you could do a secondary triplanar displace with different noise going on and actually you could probably animate this too and get some really weird cool looks going on here but that's basically the gist of it a uh, really powerful tool here i don't think that it was really kind of mentioned anywhere uh except for in this like five hour long video or something like that from uh houdini i ended up watching it based on the new features and just to, so I could see if there was anything that I missed. And this was one of the things that was actually in there that I found to be most intriguing. So definitely gonna be using this to just finish up the high poly models, like I said before. So uh, I would recommend using it as well. You can do it on planes as well. You don't have to do it on spheres. Uh, it does work on just a simple grid and you can displace it just in the Y direction, but it doesn't, uh, doesn't seem to work quite as well you have to really really up the resolution to get a good looking thing especially if it's uh, anything that's semi noisy i do realize uh, that the lower the noisiness of your displacement texture so this isn't really a, a lot of noise if you were to do something like um, like moss probably or what i was using was a, a ground texture that had a lot of high contrast areas stuff like that isn't going to work too well with this but these sort of tech, these sort of um, displacement textures that are um, just a pretty smoothish gradient between the two that aren't like small spots that have these harsh gradients like this. This is a harsh gradient, obviously, because this is displacing quite a bit here. But it's not like uh, a high noise area, so you don't have a bunch of little highly displaced areas like you do in some other textures. So definitely try different textures and see how they work but like i said the the lower the noise the better is probably going to work the best at these so anyways hopefully this helped you out and you guys can use this in your models maybe to finish them up like i said just to get ready for texturing and baking but i do have a bunch of other videos on my channel for houdini as well as cinema 4d and redshift i'm starting to dive more into redshift inside of houdini as well because i think there's a lot of powerful things going on there that you can leverage Houdini with Redshift to create. So make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss any of the, the new videos that I got coming out, as well as take a look at some of the other videos on my channel, see what else you can learn. But anyways, thank you guys for watching and have a good day.